and we're back for a video I've been waiting on. The ultimate junk removal truck tour. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube like it, but there isn't another truck like this one out there. All the details you need to know, all of the add-ons you need to know, the stuff that you need to put on your truck or trailer to make your job go smoother, you get paid faster. I got seven years experience doing the junk removal. I uh, wrote down everything you could think of that you could put on a truck or a trailer. So here we go. Let's dive in. And this is her. She's a 2005 F550 60 Power Stroke. I know it's a 60. Uh, it's pretty much limping as we speak. Um, chassis wise, it's not my preferred truck, but I got it off my boss and he got it for a good deal. So we just got it. We put it to work. It's made a lot of money. So I can't complain too much about it. Uh, I do got plans in the future to upgrade to a bigger rig than this. And I also have a smaller truck than this that I'm building currently. And it's got all the same add-ons. It's gonna have close to the same bed on it as all the other trucks. So this is the truck that pretty much is getting all the other trucks based off of. So let's go ahead and jump into the bed now. I'll talk about the bed and how I build it. The bed guys, the number one most important thing on your dump truck or your dump trailer to haul junk is the bed. It's gotta be a really good foundation. It's gotta have really good bed sides. I got some pictures when we first got the truck and when I built the bed sides, rear gates, and I turned it into what it is now. So I'm gonna start adding those in as I speak about the bed here. Um, it started out as a flatbed dump. It had kind of almost like steak sides to it. Uh, they were about one foot tall made out of wood. Uh, we took all those off. I went and got quarter inch thick rectangle stock. Um, it's pretty much the same thing the whole frame of this bed is made out to be. I slid those down into each hole along the entire length of the bed and then I tied them all together uh, with quarter inch thick one by one rectangle stock down the entire center. Holds every single post all in the exact same place. I also did that along the top in between every post is the same quarter inch thick one inch stock. So this thing is completely bulletproof. You can, you can throw a piano off a third story balcony onto the top of the bedside and it's not gonna do anything. Um, the bed itself is 12 foot long by eight foot wide. Uh, you'll see here in a little bit when we talk about tools on the side of your rig, we like to have a lot of tools on the side of our rig. Some of our other trucks are shorter, four foot and three foot. When you have leaf rakes, push brooms and you slide them down upright, you're gonna have them sticking way over the top of your bedside. So when you do that, when you're throwing stuff off of balconies, you'll end up hitting all those, breaking all your tools off. Uh, if not, you take them all off and then you do it. Um, to save a little bit of time on this, and because it's a little bit short, uh, we made the bedsides on this five foot tall. Um, it gives you a little bit more room. Uh, it gives you a little bit more to, to hold more loose, I guess. Um, this is a really good loose trash truck. It can hold quite a bit of loose trash. Um, the rear gates are also built in the same way. So we'll go ahead and jump back here and take a look at those right now. Gates. I'm very particular about rear gates on a dump truck and dump trailer. Um, this ideal started out uh, because we've modified other trucks and trailers before. So I took all the best ideals of everything that I've come up with for the fixes for all of those and applied them to this. I'm very particular at least on a dump truck itself. I like a four piece rear gate system. On a dump trailer, it's not as concerning. You're at a lower height already. So when you're starting to get full, you can close the barn doors. You can go up to the side or the rear of it and you can dump your trash cans, throw your bags over, your trash totes, whatever you use to, to get loose stuff. At your job, uh, it's a lot easier. You're at a lot lower bedside height. On a dump truck, you're a lot higher off the ground. If you have barn doors on the back of your dump truck, you already know what I'm talking about. When you start loading a bunch of loose trash in there, there's gonna be a certain point where it's gonna start avalanching out. So you have to shut the gates. Now you have to climb up to the top of your truck bed to then keep filling the bed, the, the load up. So we got two trucks uh, that started out with a bottom tailgate. It had two individual gates like this and one piece tailgate. It folded down like a pickup truck tailgate. We learned problems with that. We went to the dump. It had a ball hitch on the back of that truck for towing. We started dumping. Um, some of the load fell out and it pushed the tailgate back. Well, the bed kept going up. We didn't see it and it got stuck on top of the ball. Bent the whole bottom tailgate up. You see a lot of those beds in specific that have a big dip in the middle of the bottom tailgate piece. 
So you end up beating with a sledgehammer, you're trying to get it to fight to latch, and it's just a pain in the neck. So one day I just took a sawzall, cut it in half, threw some hinges on the end of it, and then that's what started out the four piece design. Um, with this one, I went heavy duty. I went to the extreme because I went. Uh, I wanted to have a truck bed that lasted the entire life of the company, the entire life of us driving it. Um, it's all quarter inch thick rectangle stock. Uh, this the bottom half is not as important. It's three sixteenths. The top half you got bigger items. Um, they're going to bang into those a lot more than they will the bottom. Um, but that is, I guess, my two cents about rear gates on your truck. Um, another big thing is latches your latches on the back of your truck. This gets me every time. I fixed a bunch of them. I've had to redesign a bunch of them. I've come up with this ideal. I also like this the best. This is what's worked best for us. Now you gotta remember, we've been, I've been doing this for seven years, but the company that I'm with has been around since 1969. Uh, it's my family friend's company. Um, we've tried everything, we've seen it all. We've tried, uh, we even used to have front end loaders uh, way back in the day. We've tried roll off trailers, we've tried everything. Um, so we patched a lot of stuff and we've messed up a lot of stuff. We've learned from those mistakes. So when you're talking about a four piece rear gate system like this, I don't want the two top gates to be interlocked. I want everything to be individual. I want to be able to open up this top gate. I want to be able to open up this top gate. I want to be able to just leave the bottom closed. So with this latch system right here, you can do that. Um, you can leave the bottom gate shut and you can have the top open. Uh, you're full over here. You just shut this gate. You want to still load a little bit over here. You lift up on the latch and you can still load over here. And then when you finally get full, you just close the one gate, bada bing, you're on the road, you're going to the dump. Um, I like the slide bolt uh, the best. If you make it sturdy enough, I've reinforced all this. If you have a lot of weight on here, you can beat on it with a hammer, you can open it up. It's not gonna break, it's not gonna fail. Um, the bottom latch on this system is what holds all the gates shut. Uh, it's a solid one and a quarter inch thick rod, and I also added a little D-ring here. So when you leave it in the closed position, you have this little carabiner that has a safety mechanism on it. It's rated for 5,000 pounds. Go ahead and click that on there. It's not coming up. Um, dump trailers are a biggie with this. They have what they call a cam lock design on the latch. It's a center pole, and it has two little fingers. Um, you'll see them sometimes on the steel roll-offs, uh, mini roll-off dumpsters. Now those are specific, those are in a different breed themselves because they're actually um, all steel, but most of the ones you see on your entry level dump trailers uh, and some of your big name dump trailers and dump bed bodies that have the barn door style latches, they're usually pot metal, cast metal. Um, there is only one little bead of weld around that that welds that to that pole. Um, I've seen them where there's only one at the bottom or there's one at the top or sometimes there'll be one at the bottom and the top where you just, you pull it open like this and the little fingers open up and you can open up the gates. We've had those break on us. When you're talking about latches, if you have that stuff right there, you need to put safety chains on. On this truck, they're a little bit shorter, but on the other trucks, you add a little bit of chain and that way you can chain them together. They're gonna break. You can watch all kind of YouTube fail videos on dump trailer gates and latches. And you're talking about you losing the ability to control your load on the highway. So your gates will bust open on the highway. On the road, your gates are flying open, hitting cars. So at the bare minimum, if you do not change your latch on your dump trailer, if it is the little cheap claw style design, cam lock design, at least put some safety chains, go to a welder buddy, give them like 50 bucks, have them weld some chains on your barn doors or your post or anywhere that can tie the two gates together. So that way if it does break, they're not gonna just fly all the way open. Um, these carabiners is what I suggest. These are ready for 5,000 pounds. These are safety carabiners. Uh, you see them a lot of times on elect electricians um, and tree climbers. Uh, this is what attaches their harness to their safety lines. So you know that they're gonna do the job to just hold your gates open. Um, this is another thing about latching your gates to the side. I got these to latch your gates to the side. Um, all the other little cheap little carabiners. Um, Tom's new dump trailer that he just got lasted about a month before, in my mind, the piss poor design um, to latch the gates open and hold them open while you're dumping, it failed. The door came down, fell on the dump floor while he was lifting the bed up, ripped the two bottom hinges right off the door. So cut it off, had to rebuild it from scratch. So I, I've seen a lot of, of mess ups. So I'm just trying to put this out here so that way you know 
that if you go get that, if you go get a dump trailer or a dump truck that has any of that, at least put some safety chains on it and get some good carabiners to hold your, your gates open while you're dumping. Okay. You got a full load and you just threw a couch up on top of your load. How are you gonna climb up there to adjust it if it's not where you want it? Um, a lot of the other trucks that we have, we used to shimmy up the side of them and just try to jump up there. When you're talking about a truck that's got five foot tall bedside, you couldn't do that. And I got tired of jumping up on the side of the truck and stepping on the tool holders and stuff, trying to climb up on top of the truck. Weld you some flat stock, weld some type of a ladder, buy a ladder and mount it to the sides of your truck. Also the rear and the front if you can. That way you can get everywhere on the truck. This stuff right here is a quarter inch thick plate and it's got some expanded metal on top of it for your boot to adhere to, to get you some kind of traction. Um, if you've been into a dump, uh, especially where our dump is, we dump on the commercial side, we call the poop juice. <laughs> all the fluids, all the nasty stuff from all the big, uh, like rumpke trucks, that stuff is slippery. When you're talking about the snow, the rain, uh, you don't want to climb up on the side of your bed and your boots and you slip off. Uh, if you get hurt, you're not getting paid, you're not getting the truck loaded. Uh, so just think about some kind of uh, little thing to help with traction on the side of the ladders. If you buy them, uh, most of the time they come with them, but this is uh, our side ladders that we got welded on here. We got one on the other side as well. So now let's check out the rear ladder. The most important ladder on your rig is your rear ladder. Um, dump trailers, probably not gonna need them, but dump trucks will. You're gonna need some way to climb up into your dump truck. You're gonna need some way to dump trash cans to move stuff. Um, don't just try to jump up into the back of them. Your knees will thank you later if you just put this on now. You can even buy them, uh, I think, for pretty good deals on some trucking websites. Um, this one is removable, uh, so that way we're at the dump. We can hang it up on the side. Uh, if I have to back flush up to a front porch or a building, I can just pop this off and we can, bush, we can back flush up to the back of a building and make it easier to load. Um, also, if you're going to make one or have one made, Think about having it made extremely well. So that way if you get rear-ended, this thing's hanging on the side of you, it might save the rest of your truck. Um, if you accidentally back into something and nudge something, at least your ladder's not gonna get bent up so you can still get back up into your truck. Uh, Tom, we welded a ladder on the back of one of the rigs that Tom was driving for a while. A semi rear-ended him. It wasn't too, too bad, but it ended up ripping the semi's bumper off and the ladder was still fine. So just think about 10 steps ahead when you're designing and what the stuff you're adding onto your truck. Uh, it'll save you time in the long run, but I'll show you how this hangs up here on the side. Okay, so as you can see here, that's a it, it's a heavy ladder, uh, and these is what slide onto the little slots here on the back of the truck. Uh, and whenever we need to put it up, we just hang it up here. Uh, it's just a cheap little uh, idea that I come up with. I just needed something fast that night, so I just threw this together. You put the ladder up there, push it down. It's got this little latch here to hold it in place so it's not bouncing all over. Um, it keeps it also tight to the truck. You don't have to do this. Uh, this is just, I, I pretty much run out of room on my rig so I had to be stuck with this placement of it. Um, but it just gets it up. I don't, I, I don't leave it at a job site. If you make it removable, try to keep a place on the truck where it can go so you do not leave it at a job site. Then you have to jump up into the back of your truck. Hopefully it's still there if you go back there and find it. But um, this is what I did. I like this setup. It works out good for us. Okay, uh, one of my favorite little things that I found uh, are these buyers. Um, I don't know the part number right off the top of my head, but they're labeled as a fold down grab bar or a fold down foot, like foot step. Um, these are great. Uh, you can either weld them or you can bolt them, um, but they fold down and they, they're a little step. Um, so this makes like a little ladder up here in the front of the truck bed. So we got a mid ladder to climb up the bed size. We got a rear ladder to climb up into the truck. And then we got these right here to climb up into the front of the truck. So all the way around this truck bed, you got a way to get up and fix your load, to adjust your load, do whatever you need to do. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend these. These are great. Um, these have been on here for two years. They haven't had a problem. I'm a big boy. I'm 300 pounds. Uh, there's two or three more guys that are 300 pounds. We climb up on them, jump on them. They haven't messed up. Uh, I can't say enough good things about these. Uh, and they're cheap. I think they're like eight or nine bucks a piece. You can get as many as you want to. You can make your own ladder. Um, I got a bunch more of these back here at the house that I want to put on the rear gates too. Um, but I just haven't had the time. But when you're done, you just fold them up out the way. You're not going to clip them on anything. When you need them, you just fold them down. You climb right up them. 
All right, y'all, this is a big topic. Um, the side of your truck needs to be for tools. Uh, do not limit them to just a toolbox. Do not limit them to the back of your truck bed. Uh, you're gonna get your truck bed filled up really quick if you're in a trailer situation. And I've seen a lot of in between um, the cab and the chassis, uh, the truck boxes, the pass-through boxes. You limit your hand tools to that. It's a pain in the butt to get them out. You're not gonna have enough room to carry everything that you need. Um, we got them here on the side. Uh, we started out with some, uh, I think these are four. Uh, no, this is three on this rig. Um, it's just a little rectangle stock that you cut off and that's a, you can just slide your tools into. Um, and then the center crossbar here that uh, helps support the bed sides, um, that is a perfect spot to slide tools down into. Um, I also recommend having pairs of everything. Um, we do a wide range of stuff on junk removal. You'd be surprised everything that we've seen. So you got two hard rakes, you got two leaf rakes, uh, you got two spade shovels, two square point shovels, different kind of scrapers, uh, small miniature leaf rakes for doing loose trash, getting into tight places. If you limit that stuff to a toolbox, you're not gonna have enough room and you're gonna be picking and choosing what tools you should bring and what tools you shouldn't. In my mind, better throw it all on the truck. Have everything that you need for a job. You never know what you're going to get into. You never know when the customer is going to add in. Hey, also, can you clean up my mulch bed? Um, actually, can you get some brush that's behind my shed? Can you rake the leaves out front? So you never know what the customer is going to need. So carry it all on the rig with you. Not only do we got this side plastered with tools, we got the other side as well. It's got even more spare tools on it and keep pairs of everything. Um, you have room on your cab, on your rear gates maybe, to put your logos. The side of your truck, let that be a wide open free space for you to think of anything you can add on to carry with you. Make this thing like a tool tank. Make this thing have everything you need every single day when you leave. You don't have to worry about coming back and getting something or going running down the store to the hardware store to buy something. You keep it on your rig, that way when you need it, you can use it. You don't have to waste diesel with gas to go buy something or the money right then. You already have it on there, you're paid, the job's done, customer's happy, you're on to the next one. Okay, uh, I cannot say enough about this. If you use scoop shovels for your loose trash, if you use scoop shovels at all, we used to do it, uh, I've seen a lot of people do it. You put these into your side box, your underbody boxes, or your toolbox. So, uh, we go shovel out meat juice out of refrigerators, dog feces, you name it, this shovel gets it. Um, you start putting that in your side box, your toolbox, the rest of your stuff's gonna get nasty and it's gonna smell unbelievable. Um, we found these little holders. Uh, if you see and pay attention to Rumpke trucks uh, and like Republic trucks, the big name trash company, waste, uh, waste management, on the side of their truck, they have one of these little mounts mounted on for their scoop shovels. Um, you, you can sometimes go to your local store. I know we get these on Amazon, um, but even at the local store, they're labeled as a grease gun holder. Um, but they're spring-loaded. Um, we got these mounted on the back of the gates right here. You can go 80 miles an hour on the highway. They're not blowing off. Um, they're super easy to get down, and it keeps your shovels out here. So the rain washes them off, and it's also not stinking up your truck box. And these are kind of cumbersome to put in your toolbox. They take up a lot of space just because of the way that they're made. So when you mount them like this, freeze up your side boxes, your toolboxes for more tools that you can carry on the job or more stuff that you can carry on the job. Um, they're super easy to get down. You just pull them open and here's your shovel it's down you need to put it back up just pull it open click it in it's good to go it's not going anywhere um highly recommend them i think they're like 15 bucks a piece on amazon uh or your local store if you can find them ropes are an essential you never know when you're going to need them on this setup we actually don't have a tarp um we just throw big mattresses or a couch or something on top of our loose stuff and we just throw this rope back and forth um, we just use it to hold all our load down. Uh, it's worked out well for us. It's the only thing I've used since I started seven years ago. Um, it also can come in handy. Uh, if you saw on, I think, yesterday's or the days before video, we had a big Cali King mattress in the basement. Um, it was heavy. Uh, the basement had flooded a little bit. And you just fold it in half like a taco, take your rope, wrap it around it, tie it like a lasso, you're good to go. Now you just made this big mattress whole lot smaller and it's got handles brush works really well with brush too um you go get a big bundle of brush in the backyard it's a quarter mile walk all the way down mimi's backyard she's got some brush she needs you to pick up take it put a rope around it lower all the brush on top of the rope take the rope tie it now you got a way to pull all the brush and you got a lot more than just your arms can carry um i keep 
uh, three on this side and I keep one big one over there. I got three really long ropes. Uh, I call them six time ropes. They can go over top of our load six times to the middle crossbar here. Um, we also got a little rope for just doing like a two time rope. Um, if you do a partial load, uh, this also works really good. You got a good stacked up load and you're trying to go to the next stop, you don't want to fall all over. Uh, you just take a little rope, tie it up here to the front, throw it behind your load up at the top, pull it over tight, it holds your, your load up while you're driving to the next stop. Works really good. So don't keep one, keep a bunch of them. I got four ropes on the outside of my truck. I also like to hang them up here uh, for bug problems. If you have a mattress that we throw on top of a load that's got some kind of bug problem with it, uh, if you keep your ropes out here, you're not gonna have to worry about any kind of creepy crawlies in your side box or your cab. I come up with this idea a while ago. Um, we had customers before, we used trash toters um, for all our loose trash and to get like small stuff picked up, take it to the truck. Um, I highly recommend those. Um, we've had customers in the past though, we carry usually two per truck. Um, you'll have the every now and then customer complain that when you put them back in the truck that that's taken away from her money that she's paying for. Or, uh, well, most, most of the time what happens, you get carried away loading the truck, um, you're on a run with everything, you got the truck loaded so fast, and then you turn around, you still have your trash toters back at the job. Um, so I came up with the ideal to mount them on the rear gates here out of the way, so that way if you accidentally forget them, you load the truck full, you don't gotta worry about throwing them way up on top of your truck, they're hard to rope off and tie off. Um, I got a fork design up here at the top of this gate where your handles of your trash can, it slides up onto that, and then also I got this, this good strong carabiner right here. It's ready for 5,000 pounds. You snap this back onto the axle for the wheels and it limits the travel that it can go. So it, once that's locked in, the, they cannot come up off the forks up there and they're locked in. They're not going anywhere. Um, I've run down the highway at 70 miles an hour with two toters strapped together on the back of this and didn't have to worry about it. Um, so just think about little stuff like that. What do you use for doing your loose trash? If you do brute cans, um, think about some way to just as an emergency strategy, uh, strategy to move them outside of your truck bed itself um, it, it will just save you a little bit of headache when that time comes so this is my ideal for that dollies and little hand carts um, I suggest putting a couple of them on your rig we got an actual good size dolly that's mounted up here in the front of the bed um, we don't actually have to use it a whole whole lot so it's just tied up there in the front of the bed out the way um, but these, I've got this one right here. This is the one we use most of the time when we have to use one. Uh, I just got it ratchet strapped here to the side of the truck. It's easy to pop off, it's easy to put back on. Um, in addition to this, there's also four more smaller ones that's mounted in our side box um, because you never know when you're gonna need them. If you're moving a lot of stuff and you have more crews there, carry extras. That way everybody can be doing the same thing. You don't have anybody just standing around. You got enough stuff and enough tools and equipment on your rig that you can supply everybody with. Um, it also helps with really, really big furniture, big items. If it weighs a good amount, you can't just use one of them. You need to have multiples. So I suggest getting them. They're really good. They work out good for us. Toolboxes. You can't have enough space on your truck to hold stuff. Um, this has got pretty big side boxes. The guy that we got this truck off, he actually built these himself. Um, these came on the truck when it was a flatbed dump. Um, they're great. They hold a lot of stuff. There's one on this side and there's a twin to it on the other side. This side is kind of like your basic tools. Um, this has got extra sawzalls in it, a corded sawzall, battery powered sawzall, um, ropes, pry bars, hammers, sledgehammers, axes, everything that the driver's going to need when he gets out on this side. The other side box is kind of a different story. That's kind of like a mitch match of everything you could think of thrown in there. If we find cool stuff on the job, we throw it in there. Um, the front toolbox though, I'll show you that right now. I've added so much stuff on this truck that I ran out of room. So I had to come up uh, with some out of the box designs and ideals um, for where to put easy to go tools that you need every single day. Um, and a place to charge those. We run uh, Milwaukee battery power tools here. We got Sawzalls, leaf blowers, stuff like that. I also needed a place to charge the batteries. Um, you do not want to rely on charging them in a unit or a house that you're at. Um, they don't always have electricity there. So if you're relying on that and you need it, you don't have it. Um, so I mounted this toolbox here on the front of the truck. Um, it's the only spot I had left, so I put it here. Um, and I got some wires ran up here from the battery to a power inverter. The power inverter runs over here to the Milwaukee battery charger. Um, it charges Milwaukee batteries on the go. So if I'm driving down to Cincinnati, Ohio, I'm out of Dayton, Ohio, it's about an hour drive. 
I can pop one of my bigger batteries on there. By the time I get down there, it's charged, ready to go. For the trip back, I throw another one back on there, and I got two batteries charged while I'm not doing anything but driving. Um, I got my Sawzall, some more batteries, and my leaf blower in here, the bigger tools. Um, the smaller tools are in the center console that I built. Up here on this truck also, it, this bed's got an overhang that overhangs the cab. Um, it used to be nothing up there. Uh, we used to use it for a little bit of extra storage on couches and when the loads got a little bit bigger. Um, but when I started cram packing this sucker full of uh, everything we need for the job, um, I mounted a pickup truck toolbox up there. Um, that's got all of our spare fluids in it. Uh, all your spare oil, antifreeze, power steering fluid, transmission fluid, oil filters, fuel filters, um, serpentine belts, everything that you would need maintenance wise for the truck. It's better to have it on your rig. Um, you don't want to do anything and you, you're driving out in the middle of nowhere to go pick up some lady's couch, your serpentine belt blows. Um, you're stranded. Uh, instead of waiting for a tow, paying for a tow, and then going and buying the parts, um, either you fix it yourself or paying for somebody to fix it, um, just keep a spare one. Um, easy maintenance items like that that you know have a failing point and you'll be stranded, keep them on your truck. You never know when you're going to need them. So I use that toolbox up there pretty much for mounting and holding all of my stuff like that. Uh, keeps it out the way. Um, you don't need it as much. That's why I put the stuff up there. Um, it's not as a necessity thing you're going to need and be opening up every single day multiple times a day. Um, also try to keep it only that stuff in there so you don't want to be having all your fluids and you got two sledgehammers in there rolling around an empty toolbox and next thing you know you've got fluids busted all open your filters are broke um, so just think about stuff like that this is probably got to be by far um, the best thing that I have added to the truck um, when you go pick up a piano you're gonna need multiple people when you go pick up a riding lawnmower um, when you go pick up big um, concrete statues stuff like that you're gonna need more people than just you or you and a rider um, I don't really like the lift gates because it takes away from you backing backing up on the curves backing up over curves backing up through yards um, and it's hydraulics that you got to worry about and maintain this ideal I thought about a, a few years ago and it's cheap super cheap and easy uh, it started out as a Harbor Freight pickup truck bed crane um, then I added a 2,500 pound ATV winch. Cheap stuff, Harbor Freight stuff. This thing has probably picked up probably eight pianos so far. And I just put this on a couple months ago when I bought the truck. So it's not like it's been around for a while and it's not done anything. It's only been around for a couple months and it's put in a lot of work. Number one thing I like about it is battery powered. It's got a little tiny remote here that I can operate. I just hang this on my high vis vest, I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about having a plugged in controller um, breaking, uh, getting tangled up on anything. This just hangs up on my vest, it's out the way. Um, I also has a little pin that locks it into two places, either in the straight position like it is now, locked in, or when I'm dumping and I have a bigger load, um, the ATV, ATV winch motor sticks inward a little bit, so I fold it out to the second position and it sticks straight out from the truck like this, uh, and it locks in that position for when I'm dumping. And then I made this little ladder back here to be able to fold down and just, just climb up there and pull the pin out real quick. Um, I like it. I've got a lot of compliments about it. I think it's the best thing that I've added to the truck itself. Um, you just fold this ladder down, climb up there, pop the pin out real quick. Um, it also has a hydraulic bottle jack so you can lift the boom up higher. Um, if you've ran out of power for the winch itself, you can just go ahead and jack the, the crane up with a handle and a bottle jack it gets it up a little bit higher we've picked up a lot of heavy stuff with this uh, car motors everything um it's cheap i think the crane itself was 200 bucks uh the winch i had from a long time ago i bought from harper freight and i think it's uh 69 i think right about now for about the same winch so you're talking 300 bucks uh if you know a buddy that's a welder you you could probably get away with bolting it all together um but i just welded it all together to make it as indestructible as i could um, and it started out as Harbor Freight, so I beefed the crane all up. Um, but it's probably my favorite thing that I have on this truck. Okay, another one of the safety um, concerns, kind of. When we're at the dump, um, they want you to beep your horn twice when you're backing up, um, even if you have a backup alarm. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times that we've about gotten to wrecks um, and our horns have went out. Um, these trucks specifically, these four trucks are known for that. So we didn't have a horn for the longest time. Um, we ended up almost getting into a uh, bad situation to dump a dozer driver almost back to the whole side of our truck. I said, I've had enough. 
Um, so I got an air horn installed on the front of this truck. Um, it's cheap. I got it for like 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, and you can hear when it, when it goes off. Um, I mounted the button right here because the whole horn mechanism on these trucks sucks. Um, and it's worked out good for me. Another thing I highly recommend is a backup camera. Um, I got my camera mounted back here, uh, right in the center, and it's tucked back in the way of stuff. So when you're at the dump and you back up a little bit too far into the pile, um, or you back into some brush, it's not gonna hurt the camera itself. So I got it tucked in back here. I also have a backup alarm mounted here. Um, if I don't wanna blow somebody's eardrums out with the air horn, um, just to let some of the other guys behind me know I'm backing up, I just got a cheap little backup alarm so they know when I'm trying to back up. All right, y'all, uh, this is a very big topic for me. Um, I think about safety a whole lot different now. I got a bunch of little ones at home. Um, I started thinking about how dangerous the job actually is. If you are not able to park right backed up to a garage or a house, um, or if you do pickups uh, like in a downtown region or a city region or on a busy road, your flashers are not gonna be enough. Um, I got all these utility lights. Um, they're cheap, they're easy to wire up. Um, I got a mount on the front of the truck here, so I'm easily seen from the front. I also have them on the rear of the truck. Um, so let's go check out the rear. Um, here's the rear utility lights. Um, I got two mounted high up on either side of the truck bed, so different people in different sized cars and trucks can see higher up. Um, I also have two more mounted down here at the bottom. Um, the front is on a slow kind of flash and it alternates. The rear here is on a very high, high speed flash. Um, this is where you're gonna be at. You want people to see you back here. You don't want to be working back here and somebody doesn't see you and they come back here and you're done. You're not going to get paid. You're not going to pick up junk. Um, so think about safety as a big thing. We're talking about your life. Cheap, cheap insurance for you to be seen and for you to park on the side of the road, for you to be working on the side of a road. I highly recommend them. Okay, y'all, starting to kind of lose my daylight here, so I'm trying to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, rear spotlights, work lights. Um, these these tail lights I've upgraded to LED tail lights, but on a lot of the other dump trucks I used to drive, when you go to back into a driveway at night, you come back to your house, your shop, wherever you're at, um, or if you're burning the midnight oil and you're working a little bit later, um, and you're you're going past when the sun's going down, you can't see. You're in a big steel box backing up. You can't you can't turn back around in your windshield and see where everything's at. You're relying on your side mirrors and your backup camera. Um, that's different if you're working out back. Um, get these lights, um, just little off-road spotlights, fog lights, whatever you want to call them. Um, I got two mounted that are facing on an angle, outward angle, to shine light uh, on a pretty wide, uh, wide area. I got two more mounted straight back, so when I'm backing up, I see everything in the backup camera, and there's nothing that's not in view. Um, I got plans to mount two more of them up here on the front and two on the top of the bed, shining down into the bed. Um, I will say they're bright when you're working at night and you're walking up onto it. You can't see anything in the bed at all. So I got a little bit more adjustment to do on that, trying to add some lights in the bed or the front of the bed at least anyways. So think about that. That's a big problem on a lot of the other trucks. There are not enough bright backup lights and you're talking about a big steel box. So get them, cheap insurance, and it's a nice upgrade to your truck. Okay guys, and while we're on the safety topic itself, um, cones, cones are a big thing. Um, if you can find somewhere on your rig to put them, if you're in the back of a pickup truck, that's great. You can put them there. I used to have them mount them on the front, but when I mounted the front mounted toolbox, I had to find another place to put them. Um, they're still easily accessible, but when you're talking about your parking on road, you want to have your utility lights going, your flashers. You want to be seen. You want people to see you and your truck. Get some cones. Uh, we actually found all these off the job. Uh, if you pay attention enough, you find a lot of stuff you can use off of the job uh, on your truck. Um, I found all these off the job. Um, they're not the biggest cones, but we can go put them out and kind of let people know that we're parked here, we're working here with all the utility lights and everything. Just another added step to be seen while you're working um, and to pr protect yourself uh, and to protect your investment of your rig. Alrighty guys, it's time for the interior. Now this is not pretty, it is a trash truck. Uh, it goes out pretty much every day. So it gets dirty, it gets abused, it gets beat on. Um, door panel, um, it's not a show truck, so I don't care about drilling into the door panel itself. Um, but I got mounted pretty much my daily essential tools, stuff I'm going to use on a daily basis. Um, so I made it easy to get to. 
uh, hammer for small uh, beating small furniture apart and popping door pins out when you're taking doors off uh, to just get a little bit of extra width to get big furniture out. Um, I got that right there. Carpet knives, you're always gonna need a bunch of carpet knives and blades. I got these right here so that way guys can come over and grab them out. If nobody has a knife, that's what they can just come there, get one. Hey, you don't gotta go digging for it. You don't have to go looking for it, it's right there. Uh, these little glove holders are pretty neat. Um, when your gloves are soaked or you just have extra pair of gloves, um, we got, uh, I just got these hanging up right here, just keep them up out of the way. Um, I also have a little tool bag mounted right here. Uh, it's got little pliers, screwdrivers, uh, a couple small pry bars, some uh, crescent wrench, channel locks, uh, vice grips, just small little hand tools that you need. Um, you don't want to go digging around for them. They're right there, easily accessible. And here is the interior. Um, it is a mess right now, but it is what it is. Uh, this truck started life out as a bench truck. Uh, bench seat truck. Um, I went to the junkyard and found some bucket seats um, because I wanted to free up the center section. I built a couple center consoles in our other trucks and I had a really good idea that I wanted to do for this one. Um, so I needed the bucket seats instead. This center console I built um, with a couple things in mind. Um, when I went and did the front toolbox tour, I mentioned that I had some smaller tools in here. Uh, this has got drill bits, uh, driver bits, a, a Milwaukee tire inflator, uh, Milwaukee flashlights. Not all your jobs are going to have electricity have lights, so you want to be able to see. You want to make sure you get everything. Um, it does really good for that. A couple little drills and stuff like that. Um, I just built this whole thing out of wood. Uh, the top here uh, is just an old uh, couch cushion. Uh, couch cushion foam and I just wrapped it with a pair of jeans thinking that um, your elbows are going to be on it a lot and I don't want it to wear through so I figured I'd try this and see how long it lasts. Um, this truck has also got a manual PTO for the dump so I needed a spot for the lever to be able to still go down and up so that's why I made this angled like this. Um, a cooler. You're going to need cold drinks in the summertime or cold drinks in general. You need a place to put them. This one, uh, we tucked back here. It also has a hole drilled in the back of the cooler itself, and it has a little drain valve that I put in. Um, it goes to a hose that goes out through the cab floor itself to the, to the ground. So you don't have to drain your ice, uh, your water in the cooler. Um, you just turn that valve, it opens up, it drains itself. Um, I built this little shelf right here. It holds your job site radio. Uh, this is what we got up here. It's always good to have tunes on the job, keeps everybody motivated, uh, keeps the jobs going a little bit faster. Um, I also got my walkie talkies up here. Um, if we're backing up to a building and it's on a third story, Pat can just grab the walkie talkie and he can be up there and just back me up. Uh, and I can hear him perfectly good. I can't hear him when he would used to yell over the backup alarm and the truck itself. And then behind either seat, um, I built these little wood boxes. So just another little place to have storage. Um, I'll show you that real quick. It also kind of ends up being a catch-all, but um, my side over here, it just keeps stuff from rolling uh, behind the seat, under the seat. Um, I got my, my bibs for cold weather, um, extra high-vis vest. Um, there's some extra gloves down there, uh, extra beanies, extra high-vis vest, glove holders, uh, rain jacket, and stuff like that. But this is the cab. Um, I figured I'd try to make it as comfortable as I can. Uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time in here, so I wanted to have um, little spots for everything. So that's the cab of the truck. And that's the truck tour, guys. Um, I didn't want to make it too long of a video, um, but I think it ended up being that way. I've clearly lost the sunlight here. Um, so I'm sorry about that. Hopefully y'all stay in tuned and watch the entire thing. Uh, it's got a lot of good stuff in there. But that's my input on a, on a trash truck itself a junk removal truck um, like I said I got seven years experience doing this the company has been around since 1969 so we have a pretty good amount of knowledge on the subject um, we should have started filming YouTube videos when this thing all started kind of exploding the junk removal itself here a few years ago uh, but we're here now so stay tuned keep clicking to us um, like subscribe uh, get in the comment section if you have any questions if you want to see videos um, leave them in the comment section I'll try to get to it um, I'm trying to come up with different video ideals, um, like maybe how-tos or tips. Um, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on junk removal. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, it, you guys could have did it so much easier if you did this right here. Or no, 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 that's gonna mess up. Just do this right here, it'll save you so much time. Um, but slowly, but I'm gonna start trying to put out some kind of videos like that besides just the vlogs. 
um if you guys seen if you, if you saw anything on the truck that i didn't i guess describe uh to good detail and you want to know just leave it in the comment section and i'll try to answer as many questions as i can um in the best detail that i can but this is what we do every day um we've done it forever the rig's going to change up my other truck that i'm building right home uh, right now at home it's it's kind of got the same copy of this trying to truck um and it's going to keep changing and keep evolving over the years i still have a lot of stuff i want to add on to this truck so stay tuned for that but thanks y'all like subscribe and we'll see y'all next time on the junk adventure